Hey guys, this is Nick and today we're gonna take a look at another Linux computer. But this time it's not a laptop, it's a desktop. And a small form factor one at that. It's the Slimbook One. It's a small form factor PC, which is really light, really small, nice I.O. on the back, and it packs a surprising punch for a small form factor like this. So let's dive in right after I tell you everything about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a deb or an arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Quick disclaimer to begin, Slimbook is a partner of the channel. They don't get to see this video before you do, they don't get to tell me what to put in the video, what I can or can't say, or even about their competitors' products. They are just partners, but that's it. So without further ado, let's get into the review. So the Slimbook one is pretty small for a fully-fledged desktop. It's a 20 by 20 centimeter square, 5 centimeters high. It's fully made out of silver aluminium and it weighs 1.2 kilograms. It looks super stylish. That small case has a small Slimbook logo on the top and is neatly perforated on the top and the side as well as the bottom for maximum airflow. I do have a small pet peeve though. The engraving of the symbols on the front of the case aren't perfectly centered with the button above it and it's especially visible with the power button. It's a really small detail but damn does it trigger me. Now then again, not everyone is as crazy about that kind of detail as I am. The front is really simple, with a power button and two USB 2.0 ports. At the back, you can screw two included antennas for the Intel AX200 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, which supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. There are also a lot of ports in there. A full gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 3 ports, two more USB 2 ports, a USB-C that also does DisplayPort, an HDMI and a full DisplayPort, as well as an audio jack and a separate 3.5mm microphone jack. You also get the power input, which is a barrel charger. Now the Slimbook one comes with a sizable power brick, which is unfortunate. It would have been nice to have that power supply directly integrated into the chassis. I just love how that thing looks. As most small form factor PCs, you'll probably want to sit it on your desk, and it clearly looks really good here, even with the two small antennas. Now it also feels really sturdy with nice thick plates of aluminium. I mean, it's gonna sit on your desk, but even if you bump something into it, it's not gonna look worse for wear. Okay, but what's in that beautiful case? The base model has 8GB of RAM, 250GB of SSD, and an AMD Ryzen 7 4800H. Now that's an 8-core CPU with 16 threads, and it's a very powerful chip that I also use on my Slimbook Pro X14. It's a very capable chip. That base model will run you 599 euros, including VAT. You can spec it out a lot more though, with up to 64GB of RAM and 4TB of SSD, with 2TB NVMe and 2TB SATA. The RAM and the storage are user upgradable as well, but we'll take a look at the internals a bit later. So it can definitely be your only computer, if you need it. My review unit came with 16GB of RAM and 500GB of SSD and Slimbook OS, which is basically Ubuntu 20.04 with another wallpaper, U-Launcher, the necessary drivers installed, and Nemo as the file manager instead of Nautilus. Oh, and also with all that I.O. on the back, it can drive up to three displays at the same time, which is pretty cool. Of course, a single ultra-wide display is miles better than having multiple ones. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments politely or not. So how does this thing perform? On Geekbench 5, it reached a score of 1285 in single core and 8364 in multi-core. It beats my Slimbook Pro X14 in multi-core with a nice margin of 14%, probably due to the fact that it's way easier to cool a nice little desktop like this than laptop. 
Now being an 8 core CPU you definitely hear it when it's really going though. It's not extremely noticeable, there is no whine, the fan is relatively silent but it's still audible and since it's going to be put generally on top of your desktop and not under it like a tower PC, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable. In terms of SSD, the discs I got have relatively good read and write speeds. Running K Discmark, I got speeds of 2213 megabytes per second read and 1400 megabytes per second write for one gigabyte sequential test with 16 threads. These speeds aren't the fastest ever, but they're really good for a small form factor desktop PC. Now, in terms of gaming, I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Dawn of War 3. The integrated graphics of the 4800H can't handle my native 3440x1440 ultra-wide resolution for gaming. I ran the game in windowed mode at 1080p at the lowest settings and I got around 23 FPS. At the native resolution, it can barely reach 13. For Dawn of War 3, at the native resolution and lowest settings, I got 21 FPS on average and at 1080p it reached a nice 43 FPS. So you can definitely play games on this little desktop, but AAA titles are going to be out of reach. For more indie titles though, it's top notch. And you can definitely do some video editing, some graphics design with this chip, it's way more than enough. Now let's take a look at what's inside. It's super easy to disassemble. You just remove the two regular Phillips screws on the back to remove the top plate. You can also remove the four rubber feet and unscrew the bottom plate if you want to go for complete disassembly. Inside it's a pretty standard mini ATX motherboard with a relatively small fan and two RAM slots plus an M.2 NVMe drive emplacement. You also have the space to add a SATA drive for which the cable is included in the box. It's going to be super easy to maintain and upgrade that thing. You just pop off that cover with the two screws and you can replace anything you want, including the cooler if you want more CPU power. You can dust it off if it gets old and dusty. It's it's easy, it's really easy. Good repairability score. Okay, so what's the main competitor for this thing on the current market? And the only logical answer here is the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini is really similar in form factor. It's basically the same width, the same length, it's just 1.5 centimeters smaller. It's a bit flatter, less height. It weighs the exact same weight and it's basically the exact same type of use case. But in terms of performance, the Mac Mini gets 1752 in single core and 7703 in multi-core. The single core score is 36% higher than the Slimbook 1, but it's 8.5% lower in multi-core for the same number of cores. Now, the disk read and write speeds on the Mac Mini are higher at 3120 megabytes per second write and 3120 megabytes per second, running the same tests I ran, but on Crystal Disk Mark. Now that's a sizable difference, but most people going for this kind of device will probably not notice the difference. The Slimbook one will definitely never feel slow, even compared to a Mac Mini. Now, of course, the Mac Mini is also completely silent until you push it like a madman for long periods of time, but it also has two less USB ports and doesn't have a DisplayPort one. It does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports though. The base model Mac Mini is also 200 euros more expensive than the base Slimbook 1. If you wanted to match the Mac Mini's price, you could get 32 gigabytes of RAM in your Slimbook 1, something the Mac Mini can't even do, it's limited at 16. And if you want 2 terabytes of storage on the Mini, which is its maximum, and 16 gigabytes of RAM, you will pay almost $2,000 while the Slimbook one will cost 1,169 euros for the exact same configuration. So, the Slimbook one has a better CPU in multi-core with a higher TDP. It has way more IO, can drive up more displays, it has four USB ports and it costs significantly less than a Mac Mini. In exchange, you have to accept that it's 1.5 centimeters higher, you don't have Mac OS, although I'm pretty sure my audience doesn't care about that, you don't have Thunderbolt support and your SSD is a little bit slower. Also, you will have to get used to a little bit of fan noise even though it's way less annoying than one on a laptop. So to conclude, the Slimbook one is a great choice if you need a small form factor PC. It has great IO, it's relatively inexpensive compared to its most known competitor 
and it looks really good. It will look very stylish on your desktop. It's going to be an amazing under the TV console to play some indie titles and it's also going to make for a really powerful home server if you need to. There's a lot of use cases for that thing and I really, really enjoyed using it. Now, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't stay to like, subscribe and turn on those notifications. If you didn't like the video, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to watch somewhere else than on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. And if you want to support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.